Okay, continuing. The sampling distribution of the mean. Um, how can we approximate it? So we have a single sample and we want to know a, a, a guess of what the sampling distribution means. So we do not know the population parameters. This is the key aspect here. So if we knew sigma x, we would be able to calculate, you know, the central limit theorem tells you. But we don't know sigma x. So we don't know the population parameter. Okay. Um, in order to be able to compare the approximations, we're going to... Uh, uh, so this is, if you know the population model, you can obtain the real sampling distribution. But now we don't know what it is. Um, this is the sampling distribution uh, from the central limit theorem. We already talked about how it's very accurate. But um, yeah, there you go, same curve. Now, to compute the purple curve here, I, I knew I had to use information that I, I don't, in, in the real world, we won't know this. So instead, uh, this is called the plug-in principle, so that the real population, so the central limit theorem tells you that it's the population standard deviation divided by square root of n. In practice, we only know the estimate, the standard deviation of the sample. So the plug-in principle is a general rule, it's a, it's a uh, approximation to say, okay, well, I don't know what the, the true standard deviation is, but I'm going to just plug in, I'm just going to replace in the formula that the central limit theorem tells you, I'm just going to replace it with the a standard deviation I obtained from a sample. Okay, so let's see what happens. The plug-in principle, right? So uh, now we're changing to use the sample from batch three, which only has seven. The sample size is only seven. So because when the samples are large, all these approximations work really well. But in order to um, uh, show what happens in small sample size, that's why you use a new sample that's very small. Sample size seven is considered small in general. Okay, this is the standard deviation estimated from this sample. Okay, it's not the real population. The real population standard deviation is 10. But, you know, if I only have data from the sample, that's my best guess. And here is the plug-in principle in action, right? I'm just going to calculate this quantity here. Uh, instead of using the population standard deviation, I'm using the sample standard deviation and dividing by a square root of 7 because that's the sample size. Okay? So the real standard error, if we knew the population standard deviation, would be 3.78. Our estimate is 3.2. Again, not the best, but still pretty close. So uh, in particular note, it's an underestimate. So let's uh, build the standard... Okay, let's build the, a model for the sample mean based on the normal distribution. So that's the red curve here. So we just took, we took this value. The central limit theorem tells you to use this value. We don't have it, so we use this instead. That's the plug-in principle. And we just plug it into the formula for the normal distribution, and this is what we get. So note, What's going on here? The middle, uh, we're overestimating, uh, which is okay. We don't care too much about that. But the tails, these regions here, is a problem. Because the sample uh, standard deviation, or the standard error we computed from the sample, was an underestimate, right? So the true standard error is 3.78. And we're using the estimate 3.22. So uh, essentially, we, we're, we're guessing the distribution is narrower. Our uh, estimate of the sampling distribution is narrower than it really is. Okay? So that's a problem. Uh, many statistical calculations use the data 
in this region here in the ovals, the ellipse says the pro where the problem is. So if you try to calculate some probability based on these tails, you underestimate significantly. Enter Gosset, William Gosset. Uh, in uh, 1904, so way back, he noticed that on a, uh, when you compute the standard deviation from a sample, you tend to underestimate, right? You have a uh, you know a small sample in particular, you, you're going to underestimate a lot. So he said, how can we fix that? So the central limit theorem describes a normal distribution. And Gosset said, invented a new distribution called the t-distribution that's just a little bit wider. So the tails go a little bit further out. Okay, So the amount of uh, longer tails, heavier tails, is precisely the amount you need to compensate for the fact that you're going to underestimate the standard deviation when you compute it from a sample. Uh, picture is worth a thousand words. Here is the same sample, the same sample, um, the same standard deviation we computed from that sample of size 7. And the uh, purple line here is the student t approximation. So you see the problem is fixed. If we just blindly use the normal approximation, we're underestimating. But thanks to the t distribution, which has um, heavier tails, we have much better agreement here in our model for the sampling distribution of the mean. It captures correctly the fact that you know uh, it's it's wider. Okay, so let's uh, look at that uh, uh, specifically. So this is the true um, standard deviation, uh, you know, we obtained through simulation. And student's t-distribution, because of the wider tails, the, the heavier tails, it compensates for that underestimate. OK, so this is a big deal, uh, because it's all the statistical analysis from now on, whenever we want to talk about the sampling distribution of the mean, uh, the t distribution will allow us to uh, build much better estimates and much better um, uh, correctly characterize those tails of the distribution. Okay, so to understand this, uh, you have to know about the student t distribution, which we talked about in chapter two uh, as an abstract concept, the t distribution. And now we're starting to use it. Like This is why we did all this uh, background material in chapter two, is because we need it now. Okay, So the, the model for the, sample, the sampling distribution of the mean is based on the t-distribution. So there is a new parameter here called the degrees of freedom. And because this sample is of size 7, we're going to use the degrees of freedom 6. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Um, it, it, essentially, the, 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 the amount of heaviness in the tails, you need to choose it depending on uh, the sample size. And the, the, the exact choice is n minus 1. So that's the degrees of freedom. And the center of the distribution, we put it on the uh, population mean. And the scale, so this is the, the, the width, we use the estimate from that sample. Okay, a little terminology, the scale, uh, yeah, details, unimportant details. But the, the, the point is, look at the purple line, it fits much better. So student's t-distribution, good job. Uh, little anecdote, student, uh, the, the, the dude's name is Gosset, but he published it anonymously. He didn't want to use his real name, so he, he just wrote the paper under the pseudonym student. So that's why it's called student's t-distribution. It really should be called Gosset's t-distribution, but um, you know, when you publish anonymously, you don't get your name attached. Okay, so this is uh, an analytical approximation. So we picked a math formula to compensate for the um, underestimate of the standard error. There is a completely separate way 
based on the bootstrap approximation. They don't require any math. So let's look at that now. So um, given the sample, I want you to generate the sampling distribution of the means. Okay. And if we generate that sampling distribution, we get this graph. So the blue is the sampling distribution we estimated using bootstrap and the yellow is the true distribution. It's not perfect. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's not lie. But the shape is kind of accurate. It's still pretty, pretty, pretty close to the real distribution. Uh, it's a little bit biased, right? So the center of the yellow distribution is here and we are a little bit higher. Uh, let's see why. All right, the sample was a little bit, the sample mean was a little bit large, larger than the population mean. So that's why we have a little shift to the right. But overall, the shape looks kind of similar. And the beauty of this is we didn't need to use any math. We just ran this function we defined earlier to generate the bootstrap distribution from this sample. Okay. Uh, numerically, this is what we get. So this is the true standard deviation uh, of the, the yellow here. And what we obtain through bootstrap estimation is 2.96. Eh, not perfect. But yeah, so the true standard error, the true standard deviation of the population is 10. And we obtain an estimate 8.5. Not the best. <laughs> but it's free right you just call a function that's what the bootstrap gives you it's very um it's very easy to run okay so to summarize we have we're interested in knowing the variability so when we compute the sample mean we're going to get one number but to quantify the uncertainty in our estimate we need to know this distribution and we saw students t approximation and the bootstrap distribution, which give you a way to approximate the uncertainty in the sample mean estimates. Okay, we're going to do the next. We're going to talk about the sample variance in the next video.